Yo. Yo. What What's is going, going on? Yeah. Welcome to the DJ Drummer <laughs> Mike, episode eight. And we do have a doozy for you guys today. We have Mr. John. Oh, there we go. Mr. John Buckman from Bad Wolf. We got Maddie from From Ashes to New. And we have yeah. Chase Brickenden, my homie from Butcher Babies. And then we have a special guest. Again, this is our first return. New Johnny Stanford. B. <laughs> also drum tech for Bad Wolves, but he's also a mm -hmm. session artist. And we are going to announce this as everybody knows that Chris has decided to step down as one of our hosts, um, dealing with life. His band is doing well. His wife is doing well. You know, life happens, shit happens. Johnny C is now our third host. He oh, stepped, stepped up, That's and he's going to be the third original face of Who Gave the Drummer a Mic, welcoming our guests. How are we doing, gentlemen? We're doing good. Fantastic. Yeah. Doing well. Excellent. I speak for everyone when I say we are doing good. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, man. I would say y'all today, so I, I know we kind of had a brief uh, – Who's hung over back back in the studio a little bit? So <laughs> it was Saturday night. So some of us like to party. It, it happens. It was definitely <laughs> out until the sun came up last night. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. My boy Maddie's a party animal, that. man. We already know. We know what he do. I'm just out there. Restrictions are loo restrictions are loosening a bit, but um, yeah, Oregon's still gnarly with it. <laughs> so really, can't really yeah. can't really do shit. Yeah, it's what we've been hearing, uh, you know, as far as the West Coast, California, Washington, Oregon are pretty much on, still on a almost a full lockdown of everything. Yeah, fun stuff. Good times. <laughs> Charleston <Charles's water laughs> is like the pandemic never happened. It's done. We're, doing, we're good to right. go. Really? <laughs> yeah, man, we're good to go out here. Yeah. It's pretty wild how fast it's cool. <laughs> so, rest of the Chase may, be, Chase may need to right move now. to the East Coast. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm considering Vegas. You know, Henry and Heidi are in Vegas, and it yeah, is, yeah, everybody's moving to Vegas. Like half everyone I know from LA already moved to Vegas. Gotta get yeah. away from that West Coast. I mean, shit, freaking! I was living in Rancho Cucamonga for a year and a half, and all of a sudden it's like I'm over here, Virginia Beach. Right. <laughs> <laughs> But welcome to episode number eight. We do have a fabulous show. We got these three gentlemen. We are going to talk about drums. We are going to talk about gear. We're going to talk. These guys have probably some wonderful announcements for all of you to tune into. Obviously, with them, you know, I know I've been watching as far as Butcher Babies from Matches to New and Bad Wolves have a lot of things coming up. So we're going to kick it off with Mr. John. Tell us what you play, what you use, gear, sponsors, endorsements, you know, let everybody know what, you know, who you are and I'm, I'm a nerdy tour. shit out the way. <laughs> we'll get the um, drummer questions out the way. I was born May 16th, you know. Uh, no, I, uh, <laughs> I play PDP, um, like a subsidiary of DW kind of. Um, I play Minel Symbols and um, I use DW Hardware. And I use uh, DW9000 kick pedals, and I use all kinds of electronics. I don't know anything about, but like a trigger system um, for the kicks. And, uh, you know, I uh, play uh, Vic Firth and 5Bs, you know. Um, I am really, really not uh, – it's hard for me, I hate to say it, to care about drums in that world. Like, uh, I just – I've never been infatuated with – the shells and how it's like what's happening with drums at all like i'm always like i'm just not a gear guy. Fucking hit them. yeah i just want to play them and and um literally people talk to me about drums and shit and i start like zoning out sometimes like what are the <laughs> 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 dude, why is this nerd talking to me dude <laughs> <laughs> well i mean i know i mean it's fun to like join a circle of people and talk about drumming and stuff and um but in general Drums are fun, but um, I don't really enjoy talking about uh, the mechanics of them. Or, but in, in terms of playing, that's a whole different story. Uh, I've helped Chase has definitely watched me like grow as a player. I've looked at to Chase for advice on a lot of things, and uh, just being around Chase helped me get inspired to even care about playing drums that much. <laughs> you know, um, it's it sounds like kind of funny, but so it's, sweet. It's like I'm just not really. Uh, 
I don't think about drums on a daily basis and have it for a while, but when I'm in it, like taking lessons and shit, that's fun. But you know, as uh, Johnny knows, as who works with Bad Wolves closely, um, I kind of don't give a shit, you know. <laughs> that's facts. <laughs> that's hard facts. No, but I do. I do give a shit when I start to not being like I've had some problems with my feet more than I have more than the past, and it bums me out. And so then I get back on track and try and get shit right. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say like real quick that you one of the things that you are really too did to though is like the actual physical setup, like the spacing of all your gear, like you, you want it to be in a pretty specific way, your pedals, you want them to be a pretty specific way. So they feel right, you know, so like you do have preferences and stuff like that. But like, maybe you're, you're not, uh, you're not like, really, uh, like articulating it, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, you just know when it's right. And when it's not, you're like, something's not right. It's okay, John, we can say he's not nerding out like some others do. <laughs> Like me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Go back and watch the episode where we had Johnny as the guest the first time. Literally, it was all nerd. Oh, yeah, seven ply, eight ply, six ply this, and two ply that. And <laughs> yeah, I just, I don't have the experience. The in Iraq. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't have, I don't have the experience uh, with playing like a lot of different snares and, and different kits and stuff. But yeah, I just need it to be feel right at least. And, uh, yeah, I don't really know. Um, and then with my band, you know, obviously a lot of people know that the singer has quit. So we are like just in a lot of unannouncement lingo phase where um, we don't, you know, not Absolutely. really talking, not really talking about what we're doing, um, when and how we're going to do it. So um, that's been fun. Right. As as much you probably want to get back on the road like the rest of us. It, it's no. A lot of I fucking hate touring. I hate it. So, um, it sounds like I got the wrong job. Huh? Yeah. I hate drums. I hate touring. Yeah. So, I, yeah, so what the you? only thing I really like about being in a band is creating. Uh, yeah. So this year has been frustrating with the loss of a singer, uh, but it's been very lucrative to me, like writing music and, and lucrative in, in the emotional sense, you know, uh, just writing music. Yeah. Oh, you guys just got being love, studio? I love lucrative emotional stuff. You know. Yeah. I mean? Do those two words totally really make sense? To you? Leave the house with that lucrative emotional shit. <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can you literally say lucratively, emo, like emotionally lucrative? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're rich in you know family and friends. Yeah, I'm rich. <laughs> I'm rich in my fucking heart. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all that matters. <laughs> Super cool. It's all that matters. <laughs> And there's there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, us as drummers, it's like we we all have our preferences, like Johnny said. So it's like some of us is like, hey, we just want to play drums. Some of us want to learn drums. But I mean, if, if you kind of think about it, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's like some look at the aspect of well, if you play drums, shouldn't you know about drums? No, I know how to play my drums. I'm passionate about playing drums. Doesn't mean that I need to sit here and know how to take it apart and put it back together. <laughs> I, mean, I, I could do what that. What do we got these guys here for? Can you? I could, uh, I could, I could pull a kid apart and put it back together. But yeah. I just think I can't. One thing I can't do. One thing I can't do. Like great is put the damn snare wires on the snare drum, man. I, that's the only thing I can't do. Ooh, I suck at that shit. I suck at that's that. That's an art. That's a little. That's a little bit of an art right there. Yeah. I can't. I can't get it right, man. I gotta get someone else to do it for me. That's the one thing. <laughs> I'll, show, I'll show you how to do it. So, Michael. <laughs> You've been you quick play, YouTube, you're university. a drummer or are you just a podcaster that likes to get drummers to talk? I'm a drummer. I've been playing yes. for a while. Um, but obviously like everyone else, we're not playing right now. Um, I went on tour with Maddie uh, 2018. Did uh, my first national tour with his band and they were really awesome and yeah, obviously this became is good friends with him. <clears throat> this, is, this is Michael's kit. Yeah. See, Michael Ooh. looks like a drummer who knows what he's doing just by the kit. Yeah, he's got like the butt crack seat, dude. Those things are rock. I cannot do those, yep. dude. They dude, are so weird. They definitely are weird. You got to get used to having the butt yeah. crack seat for sure. I got one it? too. <laughs> you never seen it? It's the uh, the, it, the head spinal glide. It's bring that back up. Head. What does it do? It takes away compression on your spine. Yeah. Oh, that's, good. that's right. Yep. Feels weird. I got the ass. Carmichael one. What's that run you? How much is that? Uh, I think it's like 200, 150. I'm not sure. 150. Top of my head. Yeah, 150. 150 just for the top. That's yeah. good. 
Yeah, I mean, it's nice. I mean, I was sitting on like the when you get it, sweet water. The, I just uh, rock like the, the typical DW. The the, the yeah. circle. Yeah, I'm on it right now, actually. I'm just chilling on it right now. <laughs> uh, I forked up the extra dough for the hydraulics. Like, Ooh, those ones are nice. Yeah, I've been, I need to get one of those, man. I got to get one. I'll tell you, is that the same throne you had on, on the tour? Yeah, yeah as soon as you like, like, one forever, it thing smells so bad. <laughs> yeah, you sit on it, it's like, <laughs> it's like, I didn't it change you. Nice. <laughs> man, this smells like five tours. Ten doors. <laughs> <laughs> so look, it's not an asshole because uh, yeah. I just can't uh, do the ones that like form to like your legs and everything. Because I sit on the edge of a circle seat, so when I'm like yeah. kind of trapped in, it feels weird for me. It like fucks with yeah. my like hamstrings as I'm doing anything faster. Yeah, doing anything what drastic? Faster, like faster uh, double bass or anything. Yeah, it just like yeah. It, it feels restricting. I have to be like on the edge. Of my stool the entire time. What BPMs is from Ashes to New getting into on them double bases? Where where are you going? I'm not doing it. Oh, that, it's was, not a, tri- <laughs> that was a Trivium days, dude. Uh, yeah, Trivium. I was gonna say you play for Trivium, right? Yeah. yeah, those are the Trivium days. I mean, well, I'll spice it up. I'm gonna be spicing up on this next record, but it's not gonna be anywhere as like yeah. dying Trivium double bass three minutes for 198 or you know anything like that. Good. Yeah, throw a blast beat in panic, man. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Long bass rolls. I'm still, man. I, I have to practice it so much before we hit hit the road because it's just like, if I don't, then it's just shoes and a dryer every night. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard it referred to that, but that that does that is definitely it. My <laughs> and you know you're doing it, and you're just like, wow, I, I, absolutely, I definitely hate myself right now for sure. Do you use triggers? Chase? Oh, yeah. What? I use triggers. You do? Yeah. I didn't say remember. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, and people, a lot of people still get that mixed up. Like, they think triggers makes you a better player or something like that. It just makes it, if you're Armor. if you're fucking up, it just makes it louder. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, my right. God. No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> or if the sensitivity is just a little too much and every hit's like a double, double. trigger. <laughs> yeah. 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 Terrible. Hold on. Hold on. Just smashing buttons. <laughs> oh. no, yeah, happy belated just... birthday, John Buckland. Oh, me? Oh, yeah. Look at happy him. Birthday. I miss that shit. I had a wild oh, yeah, one on my birthday. Did you? I had a wild one. Tell us yeah, about it. I threw a party and it was very successful. <laughs> in the valley? Me, I'm in the valley. Know, right? One of my friends um, who works at Atlantic, he signed a young boy MBA and like mm. just killing it. Just bought like a $1.5 million house in Hollywood. And he's like, why don't you have it over my new place? And I was like, you're damn right. This kid's 25. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, yeah. 25 years old, like owning his own pad already in the music business. I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, he's probably not emotionally lucrative at this point. No. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's just lucrative he's just, right yeah, now. He's just regular. <laughs> Straight normal. Oh, <laughs> well, I can see how this show's gonna go. <laughs> the phrase for the day is here on Sensible Street. Street. <laughs> Guys, get emotionally lucrative on who gave the drummer on mic. So, who's the worst, <laughs> biggest drummer out there right now? The worst, biggest. Ooh. Drummer? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> Man, I love you know that today, stuff. <laughs> Besides me, the worst. It's Lars. I was just it's straight up. It's, it's, it's always gonna be Lars, dude. Yeah, yeah. Lars. Straight up. Yeah, that's it. Actually, I, really, I don't think I've uh, run into a band anywhere in a long, long, long time where I'm like, dude, these guys are. This kid sucks, or this guy sucks. Like, you know, it's just like everyone's pretty fucking good out there these days. Yeah. 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 They have to be. So many people. YouTube University is making a bunch of savages. Fuck yeah. 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 Like a bunch of like, hey, yeah, because when I was a kid, I was like, how do you play that shit? And I just have to like figure it out, I guess. And now mm-hmm. you're like, do that shit. Oh, I can do three. Now I can do heel toe at 300 ppm next week because I saw some good shit. That <laughs> shit is wild to me. Uh, thanks, yeah. Romeo. Yeah, thanks, Romeo. Thanks Drum- for being <laughs> you get the triggers right. <laughs> By the best so you mentioned the paycheck you get from it. I, I know uh, there, there was one I just saw. She was actually able to buy her own house. 
she was actually able to move out of her parents' house into her own because of being a YouTube star. Who's she? Uh, yes. uh, Christina <laughs> or Chris Shiano? Christina Shiano? I think is her name. She does a lot of drum covers or whatnot. I have been putting that shit on. But is she is she emotionally lucrative? Yeah. <laughs> Minimally. <laughs> yeah. I mean, doing but doing covers. Maybe a little bit. Doing covers. <laughs> pay the bill. Yeah, emotionally lucrative. I've put that shit uh, off for years. I've wanted I, to do the cover thing for a while. But I, and I'm in the same boat, bro. Like I keep making them and I'm always like, ah, that shit sucks. Yeah, I'm like, I want, I want it to sound good. Yeah, I want totally. it to look good. I'm like, it's got to meet all these requirements. I'm such a OCD, like, perfectionist about shit yeah. that I'm like, yeah, oh, it's like, just, it's not good enough. Fuck it. And I, just I refuse throw it, to you know? edit anything. I won't edit at all. And it's got to be perfect takes. So I'm just like, yeah. you know, I'll spend like three hours getting something right. And then I watch it back. I'm like, oh, that was that one note, though. I should probably delete all that shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, remember, when, um, remember when you hired you helped me try and travel for ministry? I do. Like, trying to do Actually, you, still I didn't, have the off. Off. I didn't, I didn't get the gig either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <You're>, we know. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, it, it, how many I, bands I, how I, many bands I, have I, you tried out to be in, John? How many, what? How many, how many bands have you tried out for throughout your that was the only one. Only one? Okay. Yeah, because I usually I like I, I usually start my own bands, you know what I mean? Oh, they're, they're that's like, the thing. That's why I wanted to have you on here, man, because I wanted to get to know like your story. Cause like I've watched tons of videos, listened to Devil Driver and Bad Wolves, obviously. So like I wanted to like, you know, know more about you because you're obviously you're a killer drummer. And oh uh, my story is pretty basic, just like kind of just since I was like 15, just wanted to do it. And so yeah. just surrounded myself with people who felt the same way. And then uh but I've always been a little bit different than uh, the drummers that I was surrounded with because I really liked to write music as well with the guitar. Yeah. Well, not different. I was saying you're a good you're a good guitar player too. And yeah, not really top of more. Like, I used to be a lot better, but uh, I don't really. Uh, but anyways, um, yeah. So I just um, shit. Jumper. Jumper. Just, been, just been fucking uh, jamming since I was like you know started touring when I was like 22 and I just kind of never stopped. But I had to take a break when I quit Devil Driver and start a new band. And that was Bad Wolves, which took shit. I think I started in like 2013 or 14. So, and then we I became was, like public and, you know, speaking of covers, yeah, we were basically kind of smashed really quickly into like a one hit wonder kind of band with a fucking massive cover. And that yeah. was hard to, to like, to, to keep up with, man. You know, it's like, I thought we were just going to be a band. And then, like, you know, and then it was like, boom. And uh, so, yeah, it's, that's fun. But to get to know me, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm like a football player that's like stuck with like uh, musicians, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I think remember, myself that way too. I it's remember the linebacker, the quarterback, wide receiver. I yeah, played the ball. Definitely, I played definitely. I remember uh, John when when you were ripping the ideas for Bad Wolves when we were on tour together in 2013 when it was Trivium Devil Driver in the back. You and oh, Max yeah. when it was the, when it was just a thought. Yeah, it was that. Yeah, I was planning my exit then. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, so um, <laughs> exit strategy yeah. always got to have an exit strategy, bro. Yeah, I mean, I knew that that I had to leave that band, and 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 then it became like I actually wanted to. Like I always thought about it. I was like, it's gonna come, and then and then I was like, I have to leave this. It was it was tough, man. When you're in your thirties and shit, and you just like, I was fucking start this over again. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. bottom. Fuck, it sucks. But like Matt, you've been in a. Bunch of bands, Chase. I've fuck. How long we know each other? You've been like just, you know. Uh, I, don't know. I, I think I met you like 2013 when I stopped touring with the OTEP somewhere. Yeah. There. So yeah, you know the grind. OTEP right, one of the nicest ladies in the biz. So you know, she's so nice. Yeah. She's so nice. Like just a charmer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what about you, Michael? Yeah. Do you, what bands have you been in or played with or? I've played in a lot of like local regional bands. Uh, I played it out in a band in Charlotte called Killer Core recently. Um, you know a few people that I know in LA. Uh, Sahaj the Cotton, you might know who he, who he is. Uh huh. Um, we just like, Sahaj. we worked with him uh, on one track uh, on our mm -hmm. uh, record that we've been doing. Yeah. 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 He's a uh, he was still a close producer. Um, and other than that, that's like the my first like band of like going to do some real cool shit. And then the pandemic hit and took it all away. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Rob, 
pandemic up, was the best man? year of my life, man. I hate to say it. I mean, in uh in another side of the pandemic, <laughs> it's actually the best thing that happened to me too, because I actually, you know, I'm making real money now. I mean, I'm not playing drums, unfortunately, but I, I did get like a, a solid job and I'm like <laughs> in a better place. Like Do yeah, what? I mean, I, uh, well, I'm working on semi truck, so it's not like it's, it's fun work, but it's it's something to do that I can't working on loop. them, <clears throat> huh? Working like driving them or working on them, like unloading and loading them, on them like mechanical type shit. Oh, it's okay. lucrative. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's it's not uh, it's not what I would want to be doing, obviously. <clears throat> but I had to make a choice last year and uh, had to had to. I couldn't wait any longer. I was working at the airport in Charleston. For a very long time, because I could go on tour. I mean, I could take two months off and have a job. When I came back, I was making like ten dollars an hour, but I could take off to go on tour. Uh, so that felt through. I can it. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. But uh, that was a lot uh, of us relate to that. Hustling yeah, nah, it, it sucks though, man. Because I'm trying to trying to go back and play, and I'm trying to get into this tech world because the tech world is pretty sweet. Can be. Boy, it can be. Get you. Uh, it, it can get you some gigs. Man, yeah, I a little. I want that sneaky tech, tech man that just comes in, huh? Yeah. yeah. It can. Yeah. Uh, you know, one I day you thought, could be there. I myself, even like through high school, I was like, if I'm not working or if I'm not playing drums, I'm working with them. If I'm not working with them, I'm playing them. Yeah. Yeah, I always thought I, mean, I would be good at that, man. Cause I, I'm not. I'm a nerd <clears> to a certain extent. I feel like I could do the role pretty well, but I've never gotten to do it before. Um, I've been more focused on playing, but now I have the perfect opportunity to jump into that world because I'm not playing in no bands right now. So we're waiting to see though what the world what the world offers. It's a nice little step for sure. I mean, for a while, like I, I was always trying to put bands together and things like that in this small little honky tonk area that I live in in Pennsylvania. It's just like nobody's going to ever be dedicated. And then yeah. my boy. DJQ was working with a whole bunch of like warp tour bands and stuff early on in their days and was driving bandwagon and tour managing them. And he goes, uh, yo, come out on tour. He's like, start jump teching for this band. I would go to their shows. I see stars. I would go to their shows like all around the tri-state region. That band. Just, <clears throat> always just go out and hang and, and became friends with them. And they took me on a mm -hmm. tour. And from there, second tour, uh, I met the Trivium guys. Their dude was leaving. And it just fell one yeah. thing after the next after that. Yeah. So I was I think like teching is definitely the way to do. Form. Yeah, I have a lot of buddies that I went to MR with that uh, they're like incredible players, like incredible bass players and drummers, and they now tech for like the biggest pop artists on the planet, yeah. doing way better than almost every touring guy that I know. <laughs> you know, we're out here, we're out here practicing our asses off to get ready for tours, things like that, grinding them out, and they're just getting yeah. three meals a day, touring arenas, staying in five yeah. star hotels, making exactly. lucrative money. Like, yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah. Paying yeah. for the life. They can have a kid and not feel guilty yeah. as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they always say, if you want to make the money, man, go into the, go work for the band. Don't be in the band. What they say. Yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, I think that's true in the pop world. I don't really think that's true in, in like mid tier bands at all. But um, totally agree with that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I only know and and dude, even some like uh, Chris Kane, who's in Bad Wolves, um, he yeah. would he checked for like uh, Chain Smokers and and uh, like Christina Perry and uh, Andrew Watt and all these people and uh, you know stuff like that. And, and but even he would talk to me about money. I'm like, that's not like shocking. Not like, dude, you. Oh, yeah. It's really about the experience of having a comfortable touring. Game. Uh, environment yep. and like being in a five star hotel room every night, you know, and or you know, yeah. that's the little perks getting that good per diem. But other than that, they're not making like you know, ten thousand dollars or anything. As so, a player, you're, you're still watching me. every night, kind of going, Damn, I wish that was me. Like, I wish yeah. I was doing yeah. that, yeah. even at a smaller totally. scale. You're yeah. still going, that I could wish be that painful. was me. And yeah, I think that sometimes the reward of doing that and not making as much money is better mm -hmm. than making thousands and thousands of dollars and not actually fulfilling your dream. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. <clears throat> yeah. I would say, I'll give you the next yes. I would say, Maddie from Ashes and New, what are you running? What are you planning on? You know, tell us, you know, what, where you came uh, from as far as the drumming background. Uh, well, my first band to start off with the drumming background was Trivium. And then, uh, we they let me go in 2015 the end of 2015 
um, did one record with them, Silence in the Snow. And then I was just mm-hmm. back to nothing for a minute, started drum teching again. And then I did a fill-in tour with Ashes on their CD release tour, uh, day one. Mm. And uh, it was 2016, March, I think it was, March 2016. And I just, I broke down with them. Uh, I was cool with the music. It was very much like more my style of what I wanted to be doing, everything like that. And I was like, I knew there was some, uh, some bad blood going on with a couple of the guys and I said, Hey, you know, if anything changes, hit me up, let me know. Probably eight months later, as I'm out on tour teching for another band, I got the call. I was in Chicago at the House of Blues where there's a million stairs to go up to the venue. Uh, the down stairs. in the tunnel. We, know we all know that one. Show yeah. Me the <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'm down in that tunnel watching rats run around and uh, got the call from that. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Yeah. And then by January, I started, you know, working on a new record with them and everything. But for my kit, I run DW PDP as well. Right now I'm on a PDP concept series kit, but uh, I'm in talks about making a really sweet collector series custom kit right now. I run all DW 9000 uh, hardware, 5000 double pedals, uh, 5000 I think hi-hat as well. I really like the 5000 line and um, uh, Zildjian cymbals. Remo drum heads, uh, Vic Fresh sticks. I'm actually thinking about trying out the Travis Barker Zildjian sticks. I tried them once. They actually feel pretty nice. So I was thinking about getting something along those lines because right now I'm running the 55 A's or X 55 A's from Vic Fresh. Uh, a little bit longer. I like a little bit, tiny bit longer of a drum stick. So it's like 16 and a quarter, I think it is. The 16s just feel a little weird for me because I choke up a little, yeah. like towards the middle, did I guess. Anyone, sometimes. Did anyone that's not hear a word you just said? Are you? Is it cut? Is it cut oh, now? I heard, I heard everything. I, I heard everything. Oh, you did? Okay, you're cutting out for me. I was just making sure. All right. No, no I'm just tired. <laughs> oh, oh there he, and now he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> the precursor. So, yeah. What do you get when you talk shit? <laughs> right. Big Firth, yeah. Remo, DW, Zildjian. Uh, I use JH Audio in ears. Those are the shit, the 16s. I got like four pairs of JHs. Just rock them all the time. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much the, I think the rundown. I don't use any, oh wait, well I do use a Roland SPDSX pad. I have one to my left and I have one of the BT1 like chop block pads to my right. Yeah. So if I do any fills, I have like little production hits that I can hit over here and all the production beats and stuff that we play, I'll play off the pad. So I'm, I don't want to just sit there. Like we have a lot of electronic pieces and it'd be real dumb and lame for me to just like play a chorus and then just sit there and be like, all right, cool. Wait for like a whole verse and a five and come back in. Yeah. So I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to play all the beats and stuff like that. Um, right. I might in- incorporate a little bit more. Like I want to build like an almost electronic kit within my kit, have like the 808 kick pedal yeah. so I can do the, the drums Super. and you know, everything. So it's kind of the Josh Dunn from 21 pilots experience, the same sort of mindset where he's got like, couple pads to his right the axis high hats and things like that the chop block to the left you can use the roland spdsx as the brain so then i can run ableton live or something like that and i can see the, the backing track and the click track and everything and i can control it all that yeah. way and then how to start and stop so i'll basically just be the brain and the computer in the background so if <laughs> anything fucks up it's my kit. fault that's what i kind of like about my kit i have uh, the d drum hybrid so basically mm. the XLR and they're already pre-triggered. I just run the XLR XLRs out to a brain. So either if I don't want to run acoustically, I can actually just hook my brain up to it and actually just send those lines out for front of the house or for the studio. And so, so it's, instead of, you know, all the XLRs, all the mics and everything being on my kit, I can actually yeah. just run out of a brain from mm-hmm. it. So left and right, right like man, there in the is. shell. Yeah. You just plug into the shell. Yeah. Yep. Sick. That's cool. That's different. Yeah. Uh, yeah check it out. Uh, D drum hybrid. Uh, mm. I've, I've had mine for six years now. There's been a couple mm. times where I've took it in the studio with one of my old bands back from Aurora, Illinois, uh, red poet. And actually we did that. We actually just hooked up, uh, a Roland brain to it and sure as shit. That's how we end up actually recording is it just straight out of that instead of actually micing the whole kit. Damn. Interesting. Cool. Yeah. I, I think like electronics within acoustic kits now has become like a, a very big norm before it was yeah. kind of like, what the hell is this? It's very different, especially in the metal world. A lot of bands are using a lot of extra production pieces and things like that now and like having it in there. It's cool. 
Yeah. So yeah. You guys got Mad Electronics, Danny Carey. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I was just going to say yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah Danny Carey's like every other thing's a fucking pad. Yeah. yeah. Sucks he's like a maestro. <laughs> masterful. He goes, that guy sucks. Anyway. <laughs> guy has no yeah. clue what he's fucking doing. So. <laughs> he's a, just somehow made it sound good. Yeah. yeah, I just wish it was better, you know. Just yeah, I mean, hey, triggers and pads, man. <laughs> cheating. Yeah, you're not even playing. Not even yeah. playing. <laughs> he used those pads cheers. very lucratively. Yeah. <laughs> Stretching the boundaries of lucidity. Is that even word? Even hacks, bro. What's that Queen's Rex song? Yeah. Silent lucidity or silent lucidity? That's a good. That's fucking jam. Silent uh, lucidity. Yeah, it is. Queen's Rex. I was gonna say. Uh, Fucking liquidity, dude. Is that a choco? Whatever, that's the best soda water on the choco planet. Choco Chico, mm. baby. Choco Chico. <laughs> that choco shit chico. burns like no other. I don't like oh, sparkling man. water. I don't like any of that. That's the only shit that I like. That's, that's the only real one I like. Burn heat. Real this burn heat. Um, JV likes a good burn. Sir, I'll drink any sparkling water. Get it. Give it up, <laughs> dude. This is this is. Everybody was talking about it on Instagram, and I was like, I guess I gotta try this, and I've been hooked since, dude. Like, shout out! I would to say, that. yeah, didn't we have like a ten or fifteen minute conversation on one of our episodes about it? Yeah, I think it's <laughs> shit. I don't even <laughs> drink <laughs> until now. <laughs> I saw Jason Richardson got like an endorsement through Tempo Chico, and I, that's where I first saw it was Jason Richardson posted about it. See, I I saw Zach from the Ghost Inside. It's like over the past two weeks, everyone's been like posting and getting endorsements from these guys. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna throw me a fucking bone. Yeah, just try to get that one around the room. But it burns. <laughs> I can see your I can see your promotional video now. If you like it burning, <laughs> yeah. What you gotta do is you gotta get, get, into, a get into a bathtub with just, nothing but all the bottles in the bathtub. That sounds like it stings. That sounds like a real move <laughs> for a fat guy. Dangerous. <laughs> you, gotta, you, gotta you gotta do something out, you know. You gotta do I'm something. My booty with hole tingling with it. <laughs> Burn. It's moisturizing for the skin. But the funny thing is, that it, uh, you, you can't get it in stores here in Charleston. You gotta get it delivered, like, and it takes like a day to get it. Cause you don't like, like Whole Foods or some shit. You gotta get it delivered. You can't go in the store and get it. It's like yeah. a whole day. So you're you're oh, dedicating some time to getting these drinks. Oh yeah, I got like I got 24 bottles in the fridge. I got <laughs> like, you gotta drive out of town, hit some obscure fucking grocery store. Apparently, yeah, right? they sell, well, they don't sell them in South Carolina in the store. They sell them in the store anywhere else but South Carolina. I don't I don't, I don't get it. But so, so, what, so what do you just like hit up sell. Amazon huh? kind of thing? You just hit yeah. up the Amazon and just get it sent out. Yep, it's the shit, man. I gotta get what a that, fucking uh, company. Tangerine. They're great. I'm trying to get me a sponsorship. I'm gonna fucking. I gotta do something. <laughs> Everyone's getting a you sponsorship. Just, I gotta get sponsorship. You just gotta start putting it in the frame constantly. Just have it sitting on the desk. Always so just, be able to see it. A, yeah, I got, I'm moving to a new practice spot, so I'm I'm working on building the setup in there, and uh, just believe I'm gonna get like a Topo Chico like flag behind my kit. <laughs> just get a like kit made. Drum get covers like a, about you. Thing. Is everybody here a heavy metal fan? Of course. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So, yeah. no. what's the best Pantera record? Great Southern. Ooh. Vulgar. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna I say Vulgar. I'm with Chase. Great Southern. Me too. I'm a Southern man. <laughs> Southern kind of guy. Vulgar just got my heart. It was the first song I ever played with the band. Was uh, Mouth for War. Same really? dude. Same dude. That's that's my yeah. That's my heart, man. Vulgar's cool, and it's it's. I think it's technically like a better record on a first listen, but it gets old, and uh, it's also it is a little cheesy at times. You know, like I can see <laughs> the transition I, between the Cowboys and what they were after. You know, what I mean, after, from Great Great Southern on, it's like yeah. a transition record. I don't know why Dude, I asked that. I just feel like talking about Pantera. Sorry. Pantera's <laughs> amazing. Pantera. And the first time I met V. Paul, I, I, uh, I went to see Damage Plan play in Indianapolis, and I walk into the corner bar. It's right around, right around the, from the venue. And I walk inside, and I just get, a, get your ID, brother. And I look, and I'm, I'm like, where's this guy? And I like, look. Back, he's like, that short. It's fucking Vinnie Paul. He like gave the door guy a smoke break. The dude like. He's like, come on, brother. I'll just fucking take IDs for you for a minute. So Vinny Paul is like taking my ID, and I was like, I'm real confused about what's happening right now. But like, I got 
to talk to you for a second. He was like, keep moving. I was like, all right. <laughs> keep it moving. <laughs> keep it moving. <laughs> That's fucking funny. Yeah, keep moving. One of our fucking heroes. I, he, watched, he watched us play in Vegas when we played at um, Hollywood Bowl. Is that Hollywood yeah. Bowl? Is that Hollywood yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, you were there, Adam. Um, and I was just like, I didn't realize he was watching us play. And as I like halfway through the set, I saw saw his cowboy hat. I was like, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Don't fuck up. Yeah, that was actually a week before his passing. Uh, I was with, I know, I was with you. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> we were all hanging out. Uh, Mark Marcus Rafferty was there. Um, there was a couple other guys that was from the that crew, I should say, that was there. And then all of a sudden, yeah, we ended up ending that tour in Mesa, didn't we? I know oh, it was in Arizona. We ended the tour know. in Mesa, but not, these guys only had to go back to California, Las Vegas area. But we had to drive from Mesa all the way back to Chicago from where Nine Points based out of. So it's like we get back in, on, me and Rob and a couple of the other guys ended up getting back in that Father's Day. And then it, the next morning we all woke up and it was just like, holy shit, are you serious? We, we were just hanging out with him a week ago. Perfectly fine, healthy, shooting the shit, drinking his, drinking his drink and yeah. not a damn thing. And all of a sudden it's like, damn. Yeah. World damn. Calls part. Only met him one time, man. I was walking on the road and he honked his horn out the way. He told me to get the fuck out of the road. And I was like, That was the first day that I actually met Michael. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they, point, oh, yeah. yeah. I can't remember. Five finger, who else was on. It was Five yeah. Finger Hell Yeah, Non Point, and then some other band. And then my band opened the festival. It was like a little radio yep. festival that they do in Charleston every year. And, um, I guess they were in Jacksonville the night before and their bus broke down. So they were driving in from Jacksonville in minivans and uh, my band got done playing our set and I was walking to the bathroom and I'm walking in the middle of the road behind <clears> the <throat> festival and like someone honks a horn and I'm like, the hell? and I look over and it's Vinnie Paul driving a black minivan. He's like, get the fuck out the way. And I'm like, oh shit, my bad. <laughs> I had a whole fucking gang of strippers in the back or something. Yep. He had somewhere right. to go. <laughs> right. <laughs> But no, it was that was amazing. And then like I walked out the bathroom because Chad Gray walked into the bathroom and started warming up, and he just started yelling in the bathroom stall. And I was like, "Fuck!" I was like taken back by that. And then I walked out the bathroom, and I saw Vinny Paul standing there, just standing there. And I was like, "Yo, like I did not mean to get in the way of the road. Uh, can I get a picture?" Like I was like, <laughs> I was like <laughs> <laughs> "Actually standing in his way in the bathroom." Yeah, he's like, he's, uh, my he way. Was he's like trying to pick. <laughs> Right too. <laughs> yeah. It was awesome. It was awesome. That's that's my Vinnie Paul story. I was in the middle of the road and he was trying to drive by and he said he honked the horn and said, get the fuck out of the way. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. I fucking love it. Uh so Chase, tell us about you, man. Tell us about your background, your drums, all that good shit. Uh yeah, so I, I grew up in Oregon. And then I moved to LA in 2005, went to MI, um, started touring a little bit after I graduated with OTEP. Uh, you know, I did the million lo little local band things, right? I've tried yeah. a million bands, um, all kinds of different styles. I've been, I, I was in a pop band for a while, I've done sessions all. I did session, like, I've done black metal sessions, I've done, you know, recorded uh, Butcher Baby's record, I've done some other sessions in all kinds of different styles. Um, yeah, I've been so I toured with OTEP from 2010 to 2013, uh, and then I did a Thrown into Exile, and we did we did a Mayhem Fest. Do you guys ever do Mayhem tour? Yeah, yeah. I did it in 2014. Oh, really? And that shit that shit was the best, dude. Yeah, that was sick. <laughs> Rockstar Fantasy Camp. It was sick as fuck. It was so awesome. And we were on the main stage, so it was, it was very. Uh, very easy for me really yeah we were we were the first band mm. <laughs> it was it was, it was still wild. um yeah so after that i, I took a couple <clears throat> years off after that and then um well the last tour i did with otep we took butcher babies out on their first tour ever their first national tour and then you know we got really close uh henry's from the town next to my hometown in roseburg um and you know so we rode down and it was kind of like a unwritten thing that if 
they ever lost their drummer, I'd be the dude. So they called me up. I wasn't doing anything. Started touring with them. Uh, first tour was with Megadeth and Amon Marth. We were doing arenas. <laughs> oh, shit. Hell yeah. Um, uh, it was wild, dude. And yeah, so it's been it's been good. You know, now they're like we're closest friends and we found some wild pit. Um, as far as gear goes, man, I've been I've been, I've been with Peisty forever. Uh, I've been with Promark and Evans for a long time now too. So I'm I'm Peisty, Promark, Trick, Evans. Um, I don't have any. I've you know what I haven't had a Shell endorsement at all ever. <laughs> so don't need it. Y'all fucking hook me up. Shell endorsement. <laughs> I don't need it. You don't want it. Then you can play yeah, whatever. Play, you can go to any play studio, play whatever. Yeah, yeah. I play Gretsch, uh, Renal Walnuts right now. I love that kid. Um, yeah, yeah. All all diecast hoops. You know, I'm I'm I am the nerdy guy. I like you know, I love my gear. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I rock trigger setup with um just rolling, you know, rolling TM2, RT 30K, um, and just just uh, nothing on the snare, just a kick trigger. Um, yeah, that's that's about it. Super simple. I'm curious about your Pisces. What's your uh, what's your Pisces setup? I I've actually just uh, been I, switching I, I to Pisces. I change out the line a lot. Um, I play a lot okay. of those. I play a lot of the 900s because they're like they're the budget ones. They sound when you're playing live, they sound just as good as the as the other shit, honestly. And right. they're not going to cost that much when the warranty runs out. And I, <laughs> <that's okay>. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I uh, let's see. I got a 19 and 20 inch. I, I have a 2002 and a and a 2002 20 inch on my right for my right crash. I have a. Uh, 19 inch rude wild china. I, I rock a um, PST or like the uh, is a what was it Alpha Swiss crash with a stack on top crash. of 900 china. Yeah, so I have like a 18 inch stack, and I also rock a um, a 14 inch stack with a with a 12 inch over a 14 inch china. Um, I got a couple a couple splashes there, um, 900 and and uh, and a signature. And I just, I, I've been rocking the same hats. I've, been, I've had these 15 inch, 20 custom metal hats since I started touring with them. And I just broke them at our, li at our live session, yeah. uh, our live stream in, in Arizona that we just did. Of all places. Yeah. So it, took, it took me, dude, it took me <clears throat> 10 years of touring to break those hi hats. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> it was pretty good, good yeah. Uh, I have a 20 custom uh, metal ride that I've had since the beginning too. I just I got like all 20 custom metal when I first started, and you know I, I, everything but the ride and the hi hats lasted all the way up until like a month ago. Damn, uh, that's sick. yeah. So I, I love right that on. company, man. Forever. Yeah, uh, I've been digging them. Yeah, dude. Um, yeah, sticks. I <laughs> I've been fucking around with some smaller sticks. I've been playing five Bs forever, but. Um, I was I was doing some some five A's the other day, and I've I've been playing like a lot more fusion and pop on my on my free time. So it's actually felt a lot nicer. Like I can get around the kit a lot better with five A's. Yeah, I was rocking the five B's for a while. I actually used to rock the two two B's for a minute, like the tree trunks. Ooh. Yeah, Shit, it was huge. Yeah, <clears throat> it was too much. It was nice. I get off well, that, my, man. My, my arms were burning, so I dropped down to five B. I was actually running Ray Lazier's signature stick when he was like prototyping to switch over. I used to use his Promark ones and then to Victory, and they're a little bit bigger. And then I dropped down to the X 55 A's, like the 55 A's, because it's kind of in between. I was like, I felt the same. Like I could just get around the kit easier without burning out as fast. I was like, I fuck with yeah. this. I was it like, I like felt, this. It felt like I was playing with twigs at first. Yeah. It's just because I broke, I broke all my five Bs and I didn't order any. And then I had some five A's around. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah. You just tried it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's sometimes oh. it's like, I'll be so in my head about things like that. Like I have to use five Bs and then I just go and like, I'm like, whatever. Oh, like there's no limits. Let me just try something like a five A or whatever. I'm like, wait a second. I actually like this. Like yeah. and a lot of other times I'm, I'm so used to what I'm used to that it's like, I don't accept anything else. I'm like, nope, it's gotta be this. And then sometimes I just surprise myself. I'm like, oh, yeah. I could do this. And it actually is kind of nice. Yep, yep. You know, people change, man. People change. <laughs> they go through seasons. <laughs> <laughs> John, uh, did you tell me once? Go ahead. Yo, JB, real quick. Did you say that you used <clears throat> to play the Abe, the Abe Laboreal Jr. stick, the first, the big black one? Yeah, that's my yeah, favorite to this day feeling stick, but it they like they thin out at the top 
and based on, I guess the way I play or something, they break really easily they, when it comes, when it comes they to they break on me too. Yeah, yeah, I just fucking got rid of it, but th that is still stick in hand my favorite feel. Yeah, um, you also hit like you're trying to merge your hair down. Doing what Matt was saying, I did those two A's or whatever. Fuck that shit. Um, yeah, two two B's, the logs. Two B's, two B's. Yeah, the logs. You ever see Alan Grind from Despised Icon play with that shit? <laughs> yes, I told totally. They're marching sticks or some shit. I don't know. The Wolverine, yeah, they're butts. <laughs> 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 animal. <laughs> yeah, that guy. I don't understand people like that. He the, plays I mean, Despised I Icon so songs with logs. Yeah, you know, um, you know Ben. Why am I spacing on his last name? From uh, Whitechapel, he's not in the band anymore, though. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Harklerod. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, shit, what was I just gonna he's say? A fucking animal too. Oh yeah, but he was just like he gave up on the band. Just like he's like, I'm fucking tired of, like, like practicing to be up to speed to be in this band every day. Like, cause he can do it, no problem. But he's like, the, it's like just the fucking. It's like working out, you know. It's like ah, he's just doing it to stay yeah. in, shape, in a shape for a gig. He's like, it's not. It's, it's like you know, he could be <laughs> studying other things, you know. Just, How much work it takes to play Whitechapel it. songs perfectly every night? Yeah. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> people are watching. There's a band like that. People are watching. They're like, oh yeah, yeah. oh he's fucking up. There it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, knew. I, it. I feel like he's I'm a human. The sport <laughs> element of. I used to feel like that devil driver, like always trying to make every record faster and crazy. And it's like, I just don't have that vibe anymore. <laughs> uh, man, I feel that. Like we, we just did five songs with Matt Good in Arizona. We, we put out four of them already. We actually did two more with them. And they're like, there's hardly any double bass in them at all. Cool. It's, yeah, it's <laughs> cool. Great. <laughs> yeah. Cool. That is Sick. Sure Butcher talk. Babies with Hooks is like different, but it's cool. Like I, I dig the vibe of what you guys yeah. are doing. It's a little bit of a departure, but you know, people like it. I like it. I like playing the songs a lot. Were you in the band with the can't stop moving? No, you can't stop. Moving. No, I, I I think I played that song maybe 700, 800 times though now. Oh, uh, uh, that's <laughs> I, I, always, I enjoy that chorus. It just always kind of makes me go, all right, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, this is pretty good. You know, that <laughs> I really like being about uh, being in Butcher Babies because they, Henry's just like, dude, just do whatever. So I've like, they, they're like totally cool with me embellishing everything and adding my, a bunch of different flavor. I pepper the shit out of that with all kinds of stuff that's not on the records live. Yeah, good. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, see, so you see these questions that pop up. Are we supposed to be like answering them through here or what? Yeah. Uh, don't don't say, once, we come, about that one. once we come to like our, que our kind of question portion or whatnot, right now, I want you guys to be able to, you know, Tell them, you know, where you're coming from and what you use and stuff like that. And then usually oh. I'll I'll go back and then grab the questions. That way, you know, we can sit here and fill people in. Um, actually, we can go ahead and do that. Uh, are, if Chase, if you're done and stuff. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. I, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> Daniel, Nasty, Wait, you off, Chase? Hey, there's there's no time limit. I literally, I mean, if you guys want to bullshit for three hours, we can bullshit for three hours. That's that's totally up to you guys. John's John's little comments coming up. I ordered a burrito. I love burritos. <laughs> uh, Daniel asks, what would you guys recommend for a startup kit? My nine year old loves drums and wants a set. I'd move him to guitar. It's a lot cheaper. Also able to play. It's a quite lot a bit. More. Yeah, I mean, rent's yeah, free at an insane asylum after you have to check yourself in after a couple of years. You know, <laughs> <Jagged> point. <laughs> constant Jagged beating point, drums. I mean, uh, I know, would say I'm gonna, kit. Yeah, the electric kit would be good for a quiet yeah. household and be able to yeah. play whatever. But if you wanted a, a, a real acoustic kit, I'm going to do, with obviously, the DW plug and go with the PDP kits. Yeah. They're cheap, they're affordable, but they're durable. They sound good. They yeah. sound great. You yeah, know what I was I mean, what I think? Does anyone have any comments on this? Like, if you're fucking starting off on an electric kit, I think when did if you play that for like a year and when you go to a real kit, you're gonna be like, what you're the fuck? Yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly. Because yeah. yeah. no. no electronic kit unless it's dire. Like unless yeah. you're yeah. in an apartment in Manhattan, you know what I mean? Like <clears> um, to me, that. to yeah. me, the e kit comes in when you've already been drumming and you just yeah. need to keep up chops because exactly. we all understand yeah. like you can't do double stroke fills like that that easy on a yeah, no. kit, an electric kit like i bust out some shit that i'm like how the fuck did i do this yeah. you know Dude, like, I'm <laughs> so well, then not only that it's like even practicing learning how to tune your drums you you can't tune electric kit sure. also 
So it's, yeah. it's like you need to grasp the reality is like if you do plan on, you know, making this your passion and actually want to do it full time, you know, you need to learn how to tune a kit. You need to learn how to take it apart, put it back together. What head is better for you? Comfortable so that with it, with, you know, electric kit, you're just like, OK, I'm ready to go. I, I yeah, you got to be a real man. <laughs> Real woman. John's point, the big, the biggest thing too is drummer's job is controlling tempo and dynamics. And for right. the, the e kit, you cannot control dynamic or learn how right. to control dynamics. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then you become, you know, like a fucking one dimensional drummer. That. Yep. You know, if you get That's into right. a gig, you're gonna be half ass. No, absolutely. I have a, I have like a tiny suggestion. So ch I, I used to teach pretty young kids. Like I teach kids from like seven to twelve. Like had a lot of kids in that age range and one of the things these kids would always struggle with was the size of the drum kit right so they come into the practice room and it's a 22 inch bass drum and the toms are all deep and tall and they're like nine and they're like trying to play inside of this drum kit and they can barely yeah. do you know or some of them can't reach the pedals you know stuff like that so like i would i would really recommend if he's nine if he hasn't grown a lot that may look at like a, a 20 inch or an 18 inch kick drum, kick drum size so that you can mm -hmm. actually set up um, and get and kind of like comfortable in that world because otherwise it can be a little awkward and some kids give up because it's uncomfortable or they just learn really bad habits so you yeah, kind of yeah. kill two birds with one stone and those little kits are super cheap like the ludwig uh, quest love kit is like 400 bucks um and it's actually a yeah. legit little, kit. It's like a little 16 yeah. inch kick drum it's tiny so like it uh, you know he but you could play that kit as an adult if you're doing like a you know, yeah, restaurant, a little, little, dance, jazz, get a little, little, little pop kit or whatever. So like, there's always something like that too. Um, and I always recommend used, right? Like look used. If you can find something used, oh, of course. it's not like beat yeah. the hell, you know, you save the money. And then when he's 11 and he maybe quits and you're not out like a thousand bucks. Yeah. Also, if you're, you know, if you can make that kid sound, kit sound good, you're going to make some really good sound, sound good. really good. Sound right. really good. Yeah. Right on. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Cause it's all about the player. You know what I mean? Like, if you can play, you can go on some shitty kit and make it sound dope, you know? True. Yeah. That's why I always <laughs> – whether What's it's up? a song or whatever, someone else, it's always my answer to everything. Like, oh, man, that fucking – that steak was really good. I'll be like, it's the player. It's the player. It's the player. <laughs> Every fucking time, god damn it. <laughs> Comes out real good today. Yeah, it's the player. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is funny. Okay. I love it. We'll do this next question individually. We'll start. We'll start with Maddie this time. What is the most difficult challenge you encounter being on the road? Y'all don't say finding a bathroom in the morning sometimes. I don't. Know. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, uh, that's that's legit. I don't know. I mean, it depends on the situation. That's kind of situational. Sometimes it's finding sure. a it's time not. to be able to sleep. Uh, sometimes yeah. it's something super basic, like, you know, going to the bathroom, whatever. But uh, I don't know. Just uh, I think staying in touch with people back home, like a lot of times or like balancing your work and relationship and keeping that whole life really sane. Like I haven't had a lot of relationships while I've been touring, uh, which has made it a little easier for me to just kind of focus on myself. But I see a lot of people that I've toured with be married with children and things like that. So I think that being on the road, having a child back home, uh, Matt, who is in my band, is married with a 12 year old and for the first five years of his life was always out and busy and like kind of missed out on a lot of those things. So I think that seeing that is probably one of the most difficult things I would say that, that I witness. I just haven't had the experience firsthand. Right. Yeah. How about or, you, Chase? Uh, most difficult challenges <clears throat> on the road? Besides the bathroom. Uh, <laughs> besides, yeah, besides the when we're headlining and finding a toilet every day. Um, <laughs> a decent toilet. A, we should say a decent if we're, if we're, yo, if we're If we're, if we're uh, direct support on the Mega, that's where I didn't have that problem. Yeah, you're hooked up. <laughs> you're hooked up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, honestly, a lot, honestly, for me, it's like staying healthy, eating right. Um, yeah. It's really hard to fucking eat right or not spend a lot of money on healthy food. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm into health and fitness. And... Uh, when you get in the road and it's that situation with you know these people you end up fucking partying a lot on the bus and when you party it's really hard to like stay focused on the things like the the health you know the health side of your life um i, I definitely struggle with that on the road because well like we we did these vip pizza parties every fucking day 
Oh boy. So I was just, just about to ask you that. And, and he beats, I'm like, yeah, I'm never going to see my abs again, ever. Sounds great. <laughs> <but> like, <laughs> just at the end of it, you're like, oh. I, I was going to say, I can't attest to Chase. Chase, Henry, and then uh, Adam from Nonpoint is like, you guys all on that one, we had 10 and a half weeks together. As like you guys always had a workout routine, or you guys were working out together. Heidi was prison really work work time as well. Yeah, we just do prison workouts. Do I remember it's, it's hard to motivate to make, motivate yourself to do that shit in the sun every fucking day in front of people. You know, yeah. like, you don't want to do that. Stay motivated well, to work well, out. Yeah, remember, I was say, yeah. say when we were in Texas, I think it was the San Antonio date. It was a hundred and eight degrees. <sighs> And you guys were out in the parking lot working out. Or no, actually, you brought it inside of the venue. Yeah. We'd have to. Because I think we would have died. Brutal. <laughs> I remember we played yeah. one show of Butcher Babies in Nonpoint. It was on that tour you guys were on. We played in Tennessee. And, like, I walked out of our bus, and I was like, these motherfuckers is going in. Y'all are fucking in there, like, fucking doing jumping jacks, fucking lifting each other up, fucking throwing shit. I was like, damn. They're going to jam out there with these damn yeah. weights. <laughs> I was like, shit. Yeah, how about you, John? Mm. Uh, probably. There's a, there's a lot of things that I fucking have a problem with on tour. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I would say, number one, and I don't enjoy it the most is when I'm in a rut with something like playing wise, I'm trying to keep this like you know, applicable to drumming. You know, it's like some tours I fucking feel great and play great no matter what kind of shape I'm in, no matter how much I'm drinking, no matter how much shit I'm eating. And then, you know, some tours I don't. Some tours the whole tour just feels like it was a struggle to have a good show. And, and uh, it's just, I don't understand it sometimes, you know? So like, I, yeah. and it's like, you know, I can warm up for two hours and go out there and blow the fucking blow it you know but like when i say blow it of course i don't blow it it's like what the fuck this guy can't play drums but like just little mistakes that happen in the same place every time and like you know yeah. uh it's just Eat sometimes i start off the tour feeling great and it just continues and then sometimes that first show doesn't go so well and it kind of just doubles down and it just you know um and, but it's been like that for me ever since i started touring so I start know. overthinking that one spot and then you keep fucking yeah. it up that happens. Yeah. Yeah. that happens to everybody and as johnny knows i always struggle with this beat i wrote from this song called i'll be there it's just, it's yeah. just not fun. It's just like, it's just, and it's all me. So it's just, I'm the only one playing at that moment too. And it's just like, it's a little bit out of my way, you know, that's another it's thing. super <laughs> linear. It's so yeah. linear that it's like, it's just, you know, yeah. so like if there's even like a slight little thing, like a hiccup, it's a little bit, you feel it yeah, it's super hard. And I can see, I see it in your face when it happens. You're like, fuck. Yeah. It's a double bass part that it's a permeated paradiddle on top of it that switches from right to left hand lead. Yeah. So it's yeah. just like, it, I sh I love it the way it sounds, but I don't think I. It's a little bit beyond my ability, so I just don't really like. I was like, why the fuck did I do that to myself? Anyway, uh, <laughs> to piggyback yeah, all the time, bro. Yeah, but it's I saw um, I saw like Tommy's new band and the drummer. They're playing that song. I just saw a clip of it online, and like he plays it just about the same way I do. He struggles to get the left hand loud, like you know, and stuff. I was like, ah, it sounds like me, so it didn't make me feel so bad. You know what I mean? Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> he doesn't play it right anyway. He had it all wrong. You, you, you still got it. You, you still maybe, you watch videos, maybe you watch videos of you <laughs> nailing it. What's that? <laughs> because maybe just watch videos of you and he's fucking nailing it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> perfect emulation. Um, yeah, but I also I struggle with uh, happiness on tour a lot because I when I, I try not to drink that much on tour if at all anymore. And then when I'm not drinking, uh, I have a really hard time sleeping. And uh, and I'm like I'm I'm really a guy, especially with a girlfriend. I don't I don't hang out with chicks. So it's like if there's chicks in the dressing room, I go to the bus, and then I'm in my PJs watching a fucking movie again. Like you know, I'm just <laughs> like, fuck this. Like you know, um, it's just and, and arenas. Um, not like we're an arena band, but we spent almost two years like basically in arenas. And I do not enjoy arenas at all. It's Groundhog's Day more so than anything else. On it's crazy, Park. right? It's yeah, so it's like you don't even remember the dates because you're just like everything looks the same and there's no yeah. interaction with people. It's just like the same security guards every day and that's it. And it's just yeah. like when you're yeah. playing club and shit, it's like you can like venture out more. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just yeah. It's fucking – it's not as fun, but then also – you got catering, so you're good there. You know what I mean? Yeah, you got <laughs> <just> no <laughs> <reason to> thing. <laughs> Plenty of tour. 
Keeping that uh, morale gonna, up. That's a big thing. I'll say, I'm going to yeah, kind of morale for sure. Of it as, you know, we're hearing from the drummers. But, uh, Johnny, I'm actually going to include you on this one. As a tech, what do you find most difficult, you know, challenge on the road? I'll, I'll come at it, like, from the tech perspective um, as yeah. opposed to the drummer perspective on this one. So from the tech perspective, I think one of the Here hardest things is sort of finding, like, the motivation to really try to make sure that everything is exactly the same every day. You know, like, that, like some days you, like, just aren't feeling as meticulous or maybe you're just like, you didn't get enough sleep or, or just, you know, you had a bad day or whatever. And so you're not feeling like, man, I really want to get the drum right back to the same place where it was. So that front of house has the best experience so that he has sort of the same consistent sound every day, yeah, you know? Absolutely. So, so the closer I can get it back to that, that, but some days you just don't feel that the motivation to be like as detailed. Right. So then sort of the, the job, that becomes well you have you gotta to make sure the drummer you know I mean? the tracks johnny you know you got to be meticulous <laughs> that's right you're super meticulous yeah yeah so i think that that's probably the hardest thing is just being in that focus especially because i am a drummer and i'm sort of a you know a creative person like i like to be creative a lot so for me to be only in like science mode can be a little bit tiring for me after a while so like i, I also need to have like the creative outlet to balance that part of my brain you know so that, that's probably for me is like just the being super super mm -hmm. focused for that long and also as a tech and and i i know like my sometimes with my relationships as far as like the guy the guy that i'm working for is like sometimes does as far as like what john is going through kind of also you know kind of like affect you also Totally. Yeah. Because, and, or really just anybody in the band, because I'm kind of also on the stage left guitar side and Chris okay. Hain is, uh, he's, he, he and I are really similar because we're both kind of hotheads, like in the wrong moment, <laughs> you know? So like, so like we'll both stress out over shit and then we'll just flip and I'll like punch the guitar boat and like fucking break my finger or whatever, you know? And he's the same way we're like punch a beer bottle or something. So I'm like, I gotta like wrangle and make sure that he's not going to have a meltdown day or something like that. And just try to keep everybody's spirits up. You know what I mean? So like right. everybody's relationships and interpersonal relationships are to lock together and you kind of got to like keep everybody in line. So as the tech, that's kind of our job is almost like we also get sort of the, uh, the emotional confidant. So then we like get hit with a bunch of shit. We're like carrying around everybody's day, you know, <laughs> yeah, also a vibe tech. Like yeah, vibe, vibe tech. tech. That's like totally. Tech that's tech. totally what it is. You got to be the vibe tech. <laughs> vibe tech. I like that. Yep. <clears throat> okay, this one actually was straight to John. Curious to hear John's approach to songwriting, knowing he's the primary writer in Devil Driver and Battles. Don't see that from too many drummers. Oh, um, I, back in the like Devil Driver stuff was usually uh, I would just write like almost a complete songs just on guitar, usually acoustic guitar, especially. Um, and then um, just bring it to the studio where uh, the guitar player had a Pro Tools or whatever, a Cubase rig. And then we just record it. And then Bad Wolves is more, um, it's me and this guy named Max Karen. That's, um, we started the band together. And uh, he's still basically like the sixth member. So it's like like this album that we've been working on for a long time. Like we just do it online as this as this right here with this app called uh, Moodio, uh, Moodio, <laughs> uh Audio Movers. And so yeah. I can hear his session in, in real time. And also I'll, I'll like show him my riff over the fucking like this. And then yeah. he'll take it, put his tweak on it and work like that. But um, in general, it's just sitting in front of a computer for the most time, just writing tunes. That's oh, yeah. And we use like, you know, program drums and like, man, it's getting so close to just being like, should I fucking even track these drums? <laughs> like, you know? Dude, um, the program but, drums versus real drums debate, it's like, I will always be a fan. I want the real drums, man. I want to hear a real person playing, man. You can't beat real feel. Man. You can't. No, you can't, but especially what you can is because I don't really rehearse when I record. So when I go in, too, I always end up doing a, just stupid little things, but they all really matter when you add them all up. Just a little bit less white, you know? <laughs> Get a little greasy. Yeah, no, uh, grease is not the word. I'm not a greasy drummer, bro. I'm fucking – Trying to hold on for I don't, life. Right? I think you got a little <laughs> grease. Like you got a little grease on zombie. There's a little swing to your to your time. Like you don't feel too straight to me. Like I think you got a little more swing than you think you do. Oh well, that's nice of you coming, you cocksucker. You're fucking so much better than me. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. 
Johnny's uh, also out here. Like this? Like this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why. That's why I'm here. In case you like break your ankle or some shit, I'll just you know I could step in if you need me. Yeah, I don't know about Michael and I, but I think I'm the worst drummer in the group here. That's pretty awesome. And uh, I, honestly, I, I just because it doesn't. There's really a lot of a lot of stuff that you're saying, man. I like. I feel dude, like I, I agree with a lot of stuff you're saying when it comes to like why, like how you feel about drums, you know. Yeah. Like a lot of stuff you're saying, I'm I'm bothering with you, man. Like, yeah. it's cool to hear. It's cool to hear from you know a big name guy like you talking. Yeah, and I think sometimes I think it's a little embarrassing to like like I'm disrespecting the okay. instrument or something. I'm just trying to be legit. Like I care yeah. a lot more about pizza than I do drums. Like you know. <laughs> yeah. I I've heard that. I I gotta say I don't know anybody that talks about pie the way John. Berkeley does he like goes in to just extreme detail about every slice like he wants it to hang just right it's got to be there's, there's a lot there's like a checklist of like requirements for the pie yeah. <laughs> it's got to look a certain like crispy to it yeah but yeah songwriting is uh, song the most gratifying part uh chance to go fit, wrap up that guy's question songwriting for me is the most gratifying part and uh there you go and um Everyone here is, is is writes very accomplished drum parts, so um, it's really fun when you get on the guitar, and I have more fun listening to that stuff too. Yeah. You. I don't know about you guys, but we all program our shit first. I like to program beats, and then so we can <clears throat> listen to it as like the listener instead of playing shit and then finding out later that it sucks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and that <laughs> track drums last. Yeah, we we track the drums last. That's what we're Tracking doing. Drums last. Remember back yeah, so. in the day, it was your first up. You're first like, oh, up. Boy. Silence in the Snow record. It was like go in there and, and no lyrics, no melodies were even done. And I like to play off of melodies. I like to, yeah, no. to kind of compliment with those. So there was yeah, nothing. Yeah. And it was just like just go in, track the drums. Right, you have your parts cool. figured out. Go yeah, for it. And then just like build around that. Um, but now we'll do like basic program stuff because our our stuff's like you know follow a hip-hop beat and then like maybe make it more metal and spice it up and stuff like that so we can stay kind of basic at first and then I'll, I'll hop on the e-kit and spice it up a little bit and then we'll go in the studio and then at the end i'll i'll have time to just like sit there with the practice pad or my kit like for us we're about to do a third record uh in this area where two of us live so i get to go to rehearsal spot right after um and go play my actual Great. kit so i can sit there and hear the music all night and, and then spend four hours in the rehearsal spot and get ready to to track drums so it helps that's cool i like that's doing cool. it at the end i think nice. it, it makes it a little bit better yeah i agree with you i agree with you i do a lot of that like recording like recording sessions for people where they basically send me a finished song with a program mm -hmm. beat and they just go hey i just need you to go in here and like just give it real real feel and then it's your job to sort of like get right in with the groove that's already established which is it's like different but it's cool in that in its own way because like you said you get the opportunity to sort of think about your part a little bit more rather than just kind of yeah. have to be like the skeleton it's pretty cool yep. yeah um we, yeah that's, we, actually, that's actually oh. kind of, uh, i was gonna say that's actually kind of how we're uh us and mac Dillon actually write bruce our guitar player does a lot of the writing when we actually use uh uh, I mentioned it earlier. He he uses a drum program and kind of tracks out to you know mix and match with the guitars, bass, vocals, whichever, whatnot. And it kind of helps me establish as far as the type of sound that he wants to run. But it's also fun for me because he does challenge me as well. Just like because you know you can sit here and write it like however you want to write it, but then like when you listen to it, you're like. There's no fucking way I can sit there and play like that. How, but you know, and then you sit there and be like, okay, I'm gonna give this a try. I'm <laughs> kind of because in my mind, I'm like, yeah, it's like, okay, cool. It sounds easy enough, but <laughs> when I, once you get behind the kit, you're like, shit, how'd it go? <laughs> yeah, um, we tried when it when we tracked Lilith. I wasn't even happy with the drum parts that I did until we'd already been touring on touring on the songs for like a year. You know what I mean? Like I was like, uh, now that I, yeah, because I tracked it without vocals. Like you add yeah. little shit to go along with vocals. You add little shit to go along with each little tiny guitar part that you didn't hear in the studio because you're 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 under pressure. We're paying for time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Who did you do that record with? Uh, we did that with Steve Evans. You know, it's, yeah. I was just about to bring up that record. I think it's a cool drum record. I think it's um, and 
it, was that your first recording with the band? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it was. Uh, it's a fucking cool session. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of cool shit on it, man. <laughs> <laughs> It was very dope, actually, being able to watch Chase every night. It it, it very very much was. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. It's not it's not like watching fucking Maddie over there every night, but it's close. Oh, it's yeah. <laughs> not even close. Uh, to be honest, I, I definitely. I mean, that that's just my thing. Like any show, it doesn't matter if it's local, regional, national. It's like. I'm that type of drum guy. It's like, you know, I want to see if I've never seen him before. It's like my focus is there. It's like, you know, cool. It's like yeah. I love the production, love the show, you know, Parkway Drive, Skillet, Shine Down, you know, badass show. It's like, but my main focus as a drummer, it's like we talked about it like in episode one or episode two. It's like you never are fully a master at drums. There's always something new to learn. So like watching, you know, Maddie, watching John, watching Johnny, watching Chase, watching Rob, you know, all these other different types of drummers, you can definitely tell there is diff something different between each and every one. So you as a drummer, like I said, there's nothing fully that you've learned everything. There's always something new to learn. There's style, there's, you know, the way they set up, the way, you know, just the way they play. <clears throat> and, and it was funny because, like, when I first met Chase, everyone was like, oh, yeah, Chase is a death metal drummer. I'm like, okay, you know, it's going to be cool trying to watch a death metal drummer kind of have to take a step back to, you know, kind of, like, up adhere to a different style groove or kind of a different type or actually have Chase bring his style into the band. And it's the same thing like with Mag Dillon. Like if you listen to the Amethyst album, it's very hard rock. But now the new stuff that we're putting, it's like with me playing in the band, it's like we've gone more towards the metal core gent side of things rather than keeping it hard rock. So I've kind of had to step up and as well as they did too. Who's everybody's favorite drummer to watch perform live? Maddie Madero. Oh. Maddie, baby. 100%. Dude. 100%. <laughs> this thought. acts. It changes every episode. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie, man. No, when I got a tour with Maddie, man, I was like, I didn't know Maddie was in Trivium. And I was like, oh, shit. He was in Trivium? Beast. This man's going to this gonna be playing some metal. But then I was like, no. Man's got the bounce, man. He's got the bounce. He's got that. Number one favorite drummer to watch. I watched Dave Weckl play at Catalina Jazz Club, and I basically had my face melted off. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. I've. I don't even know if they were the most the best drummer, but the moment where I got to I got to watch I teched for Thomas from a sugar for one show. Oh and wow. I, I was yeah, right, that's really right behind him, you know, not like from the side or anything. Like I was sitting there right behind him. Yeah. Like, yeah, that was cool. You're and, watching uh, those feet. No, but you know what's really interesting? Uh, so Bleed is the only song he uses triggers on. Um, really? so but I didn't have the in-ear mix, so it's weird how uh inconsistent it sounds from behind it just the feet sound like didn't sound like anything man and i was like, I like what? Um, well, you'd have to use triggers to cut through with that song i guess yeah, so. you imagine you imagine losing your fucking spot yeah no <laughs> and then um i got to watch like right from behind too joey jordan's it was fun um uh, you know god bless him but you know like towards the end of his career i think things just kind of yeah, God bless him, buddy. You know, sweetheart, <laughs> fucking sweetheart. Um, and uh, then there's dudes like uh, I watched Ken Shock once in Candiria from like 10, 2001. That was the first. Dude, that drummer. shit is wild. That was the first real drummer I saw. Where I was like, oh wait a minute, like <laughs> do shit like this. Um, <laughs> it didn't rub off on me, but <laughs> it was still good. And then uh, I like watching Jamie Miller, like uh, who's in like Bad Religion now. Uh, but you know, he was real tricks and stuff and i like drummers who do that kind of stuff like morgan rose he's the best to watch morgan, actually. morgan, morgan, rose, that, morgan rose, rose every morgan time rose you grab a cocktail morgan, that's my boy man i was gonna um, have him on this episode but he was busy he's in tampa it, it, favorite show. drummer to watch all depends though like i watched marco Miniman. like if i'm being a nerd i watched marco Miniman sight read my mi finals in Whoa, front of you, like <laughs> 10 feet away from me jesus <laughs> wow. they're four pages it was wow. four page charts in odd meter with a 32 bar solo with punches in it yeah, and he's Ooh. like, we never played the song before. Wow, like, it, it, that shit blows dude. my mind. Like, that shit has always blown my mind. 
So yeah. the guys are just like, my finals. okay, yeah, I got this. I'm like, hey, what? No problem. Like, how yeah. the fuck are you doing yeah. this? I mean, I remember I did sight reading at Berkeley the for the alien. first time, and I was like, whoa, it was tough in front of like 500 people, but that just didn't happen, so I just made that up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it was a hard enough time trying to do that, and I, I failed at it, but like trying to do it on a snare, because I used to do drumline stuff in high school, and I tried to do it, it's like, and that's just, yeah. it's one note, like you don't have to worry about yeah. anything else, you're just following rhythm, but to do yeah. it on a kit, that's next level. Yeah. Uh, well, they, he, was reading, he was reading guitar, bass, and keys, and making up the drum part. As he goes. Wow. Oh, no shit. Is he, is he, is he <laughs> the less rhythm chart. Yeah. It's like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> My guy's right. not human. Yeah. He's an alien. Yeah. That dude's a fucking alien. He should have gotten the Dream Theater game. He's in Dream Theater now, right? No, Magini. No, he's he's Magini. Magini. Yeah. I was also, I like on, the, on the nerd nerd side, watching Vir Virgil Donati play. Or, yeah. Yep. I, I watched, I watched, uh, I saw, um, Animals as leaders do a thing with mm. um, with Zola, uh, with um Virgil Donati's band, and it was like like Matt Garska is the fucking man, right? Yeah. And then it was like watching Matt Garska be a little kid version of you know what Virgil yeah. Donati plays, <laughs> you know, like Virgil Donati's <laughs> like the grown up Matt Matt Garska. I love all like the crazy shit, like the heavy stuff, the insane stuff that I'm like, oh, maybe stuff I can't even play, and I'm like, that's insane. I love watching that. The yeah. guy who hits home for me by far performance wise he goes into this own little world and he just fucking slays it is ray lazier that dude oh, yeah, is dude. insane yeah. like oh, i yeah, watched dude. him every night on mayhem 2014 like oh. john was behind thomas i was standing next to his kit he'd be throwing me sticks and still playing at the same time like it was just the experience but watching him every night i was like this dude is insane i say that like for him, when he stop, when he hops on his drum riser, he becomes like the Heath Ledger Joker of the Dark Knight. Like he just goes into this own little like weird yeah. world, and yeah, he's yeah. just locked into that character. And then when he's done, he's back to Ray, Dr yeah. drinking wine in the dressing room and having a great time with smiles. But when he's on that kit, he is a different animal, and it is yeah, impressive. That's true. That's true. Hundred percent. I agree as well. No, <laughs> no freaking <laughs> Ray Lizardo, cool, man. He's a, such a beast. What's that dude? Who's that Rooks? That kid, he just got like ran over by a car, but it was yeah, guy. Rook. That's my boy. That's that guy, boy. That guy he, he rips, dude. Rook, Rook is nasty. Yeah, he's nasty. Yeah. And he's doing yeah. a whole bunch of other cool shit now, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah that guy is so yeah. good at playing his his lane actually. and playing what he's good at and really just killing it. You know what I mean? Not trying yeah. to play extra bullshit that he actually can't do. What happened yeah. to that guy? What happened so, to him? What, he sent me the thing. He sent me like an article and he was telling me about it, but I guess he was out in LA one night and some people rolled up on him and he got robbed. Uh, and then well, as what? they robbed him, they ran him over with the car. Like he got run wow. over by the car. So Dang, like wow. they came up, tried to get his shit and they, I guess, tried to take him out afterwards or something. Where was this? Uh, I don't, I think maybe on the strip, something like that. I can't, I don't remember. They were just out at bars and shit. Yeah, he's been pretty low pro, but I, I follow him on Instagram. I don't know him, but um, I just started following because he's a great drummer. Um, yeah, yeah. he still, came from the metal world. He came from the metal world too. Oh, he did. And I just and I just yeah, he, he rips fucking crazy shit. Yeah, the kid I who did for him. He was, he was playing with MGK Tosh. in Oklahoma. He was, yeah, he's, uh, he's, he was he's the headline. Kelly's coming. Yeah, he's yep. been with uh, Kells for a minute now. I think we're playing with MGK at one of the festivals coming up. Yeah, he's playing a couple of them. <laughs> he's playing yeah. a couple. Machine Gun it's Kelly, cool. back on top of the world. <laughs> Dude, slaying it. I, I'm cool with a lot of the guys that are in that camp um, from bopping around the L.A. and stuff. So it's like, I'm a, I'm a big fan of that as well. Like, I'm a hip-hop guy. So I fuck with mm -hmm. the fact that he's just, like, able to cross over in all these different genres and do all this stuff. Yeah. So I've always Baze been a big my, fan. Baze is my neighbor here. Baze is, Baze is the boy. Bass, yeah. Slim, Rook. And then Rook, obviously, like, as a drummer, drummer, like, he kills it. So, like, it brought me even more involved. I saw their live show, and I was like, yeah, I'm sold. Mm -hmm. yeah. Looking forward to seeing that. I've been, I've been looking forward to seeing that for a minute. Um, I'll say one, one, per also. one person I watched on YouTube, and I think he used to be in a band. I don't know. But uh, one dude I would love to see, like, live or play is Wyatt Stav. Who's that? Oh, I, I – I've Oh yeah, yeah, the YouTube guy. <clears throat> yeah, and then he does like reviews on songs and stuff. I think too, yep. right? Long, long yeah. blonde hair guy. Yep. Yeah. 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 
<clears throat> but I mean, freaking the what his stick tricks, his just finesse. He plays barefoot and, as the dude is just awesome to watch. I mean, like I said, I was like, I discovered him on YouTube. I think he was in a band before, but I like the band is like no longer existent or they are, but he just does ha doesn't have any affiliation with it. But I mean, super tight, super tricky, super in the pocket. Yeah. And he's one dude that I would definitely love to watch live if I if he ever had a chance to get into a band. On that tip, Luke Holland's fun guy to watch too. I was about to Luke say, they were going to name Luke Holland. Yeah. I, I was going to say, yeah, Luke I saw him actually with the Word Alive when he was with the, the Word Alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he yeah. just, he's got like narcolepsy or some shit. He just fell on his face. Yeah, right? he, he I, like, like, a, I think epilepsy. Epilepsy. Yeah. Narcolepsy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah he, uh, I guess he's had it for about eight years. <laughs> Dude, now. Uh, he had a grand mal seizure. Yeah, uh, he terrible. was hanging out with some friends, was drinking, and he hit the coffee table and landed actually Jeez. on the bottle. And the bottle broke on his face and tore it all up. Boy, that's rough. Yeah. Yeah. Can, that's I, can I ask you that. guys, everyone, a question? When it comes yeah. to when drummers say in the pocket, wasn't that normally created a, like a, a reference to guitar players playing in the pocket with the drums? I don't know that, but I've I always yeah. heard that reference as the drummer and really being in Pocket. in the yeah in the how do you describe it? Well, we all say that. I mean, we all say like, oh, like he's really pocket. burying that fucking groove. You know what I mean? But I think that originated as guitar players playing in the pocket with the drums, like it behind have. the drums. And this I just is, don't I know. Think, I say it I all the time. Pocket. I check this right now. What? Yeah, let's get <laughs> it. Started. I check. I think the pocket is where you keep the money from the cat the checks that you're. Yeah. Getting from playing good beats in time. That's where yeah, the I'm pocket's at. So like, if you're, <laughs> you're, you're putting a hand in the pocket. You're not in the pocket. You're getting paid. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> but, oh, yeah. you're right. It could be, though. I, I mean, that sounds... I mean, we could go with it. It sounds like it should be that. They're they're catering to us. That's what it is. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That looks like a... Yeah. No, it's a it, on a quick Google, it's a rhythm section thing. Everyone playing together in the pocket. Because a drummer alone, and, I guess, wouldn't be in the pocket. He's just making a fucking groove. Yeah. So the pocket is. Hold on. Someone just, everybody. Just, somebody just commented. Sure. Uh, Somebody's out there just raging. Someone just said this. Being the fucking nerd. No, I'm just kidding. I understand, kidding. I understand what being is. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's giving me a breakdown like I'm an idiot. All right. Yeah. No, a bunch um, of a bunch of professionals out here. And we're like, ah. Uh, they. Uh, funny I was just asking where the term. I know what the term means. I can read. It can <laughs> apply to both drums and guitar. I was wondering. I, I wondered if it stemmed from guitar first. I think it did, but I could be wrong. And I heard somebody you know, ask a question the other day. I heard somebody ask about like what. I heard somebody ask about like what what is uh like having feel mean as a drummer like is feel like. It's it's funky, like kind of swing, but like feel is also like Dave Lombardo has feel, right? But that's not really swing. Feel so like, how would you how would you define like feel, like in like that sort of thing? I, I think feel is totally situational. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. gonna say yeah. the same thing. Same sort of thing. Yeah. Because any genre, you have feel within that genre without maybe overplaying right. or underplaying. It fits that yeah. part that's that's needed. So Super it's tough to situation. underplay as a drummer I found over the years. And that's what, that's what I always took <laughs> as far as being in the pocket. Also, it's like, you're not like trying to take away from the guitars. You're not trying to take from the bass or the vocals and overplay and be, you know, adding a bunch of, you know, different things as far as drum wise also. So it's like in the pocket, basically you keep the groove, you keep the BPM, you keep the heartbeat and you just play like what you're supposed to be playing to make sure that the music actually sounds right. Yeah, I'm thinking about gonna, for this new record, just doing at 120, no matter what the tempo is of the song, just playing blast beats the whole time and just seeing how that rocks out. <laughs> you guys are like it might be 150, lot. but I'm playing 120 and just. I'm telling you, man. Bro, I'll see you on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Chip? How you doing, buddy? Man, no, I was going to say, uh, Johnny. Likes this uh, this statement. The less is more. The less is more statement. Yeah. <laughs> no. It, it is, but it isn't. It is, but it isn't. Right? Because if, if everybody lives by less is more, there'll be no sick drummers if everybody's less is more. 
So you, well, can, I think that you have to, you have to call it situational. That's what I think. It's one of my favorite. <laughs> I, love, I love how he had to get, he had to like shake the phone. If I get it. It's, it's enough. <laughs> uh, if you watch Brian Fraser Moore, who plays for like Justin Timberlake and he yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. All, that guy yeah. is all about playing, less is more, but he plays all of his chops in the groove. You know what I mean? He has yeah. a whole yeah. of chops in the groove. He gets away with everything. He plays like all yep. this wild shit, but you would, you know, you don't. It doesn't change anything. It's just, it's the, the pocket is right there. Shout out to the, that. like that level of a drummer, like Brian, you know, Moore and and uh, let's go Sticks Taylor, Aaron Spears, dude, all those uh, Eric Aaron Moore, Moore, like Eric Moore. Oh is... my god, dude! Eric Moore, those yeah, guys, freak. Those dudes, I watch them, and I'm like. I should stop playing drums. My, my like, dude, Kenny Rogers. So good at it. Kenny Rogers. It's really weird though. That guy, that one thing, one animal. drummer that a lot of people don't bring up, and like I've watched him. I I even watched their like going into the studio video is, and he's not playing with him anymore. But Lester from Pillar, but he's now playing in like a huge oh, arena church he, uh Kelly Clarkson too. Never heard oh, of this. Yeah, he Kelly Clarkson gig. Yeah. For a huge arena church band, I, I'll throw a fucking thing on and you, you yeah. find <laughs> quickly. <laughs> huge arena <laughs> church band. I'll, I'll be. Well, yeah. he does this one little weird stick trick to where because he plays single pedal, but he'll actually take his stick down to his kick drum and actually do a double <laughs> beat, double bass with his stick and his single pedal while he's in the middle of playing some of the pillar songs. So if you ever like watch off. one overachiever, <laughs> yeah, you're just showing <laughs> off. <all. laughs> if you actually watch the DVD behind the scenes when they were in the studio, yeah, sure shit. Send their recording, the reckoning, and like he'll go down, and all of a sudden his, his stick and his pedals going doing a double bass sound for the track. I'm like, that's the same wow, guy that's, running, that's the same guy that's running in the rain at 4 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for real. Okay, real quick. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Fuck that guy. Real quick, everybody <laughs> say Jay Brooks to Ops Manager for Blue Ridge Rock Fest. We know From Ashes to New has been announced already. We're um, on it, that. Right on. Obviously, uh, if you have not been announced yet, we can't talk about it. So, you know, we do have 138 bands announced so far at Blue Ridge Rock Fest. It's going to be a fucking It's going train. to be 108. Wait, 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 wait. wait so, so you, you're, you're putting on that show? Yeah, I'm actually stage manager, oh. and also my band is playing. Oh, I thought you were like the promoter. I was like, God damn. <laughs> no, uh, this is he, Jay Brooks and Jason Williams are the ops managers for Blue Ridge. Jonathan Sly is the owner, CEO of Blue Ridge. But we do have a show here on Fridays. It's called the Countdown to Blue Ridge. We're actually going over announcements and how the progress of it, because they had to relocate from Lynchburg, Virginia, to Danville, Virginia. Hmm. And the last switch, yeah, we may or may not be playing that. I can't fucking speculate. <clears throat> I guess you have to tune on Fridays or stay stay tuned to Blue Ridge Rock Fest to find yeah. out. <laughs> 138 that's bands, man. That's, 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 that's a lot of fucking bands. Is this the, this so, is the first year for Blue Ridge, right? No, no. Um, it it would have been the fifth, but since 2020 didn't happen, it's actually the fourth. Go forth. Okay. Well, started, yeah, it seen- started in 17, 17, 18, and 19 w- was on. And then obviously tw- 2020 got canceled. And in 2021, they're kind of coming out huge. Four day festival, 180 bands, six stages. 180 Jesus bands. Jesus. So pretty much a war tour. But all, I mean, 108. All right. How many of them are like touring bands? Uh, a lot. Five, okay. five finger. Five fingers on it. Limp Biscuit, Shine Down, Pop Evil, From Ashes to New. Right. There's a shit ton. There's yeah, a shit a ton. Skillets on it. Do what? Uh, like the the band that comes in like three different cars and they're like, "Where's our dressing?" There's room? gonna be a few of those. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. gonna be a few of those. <laughs> like we are playing this festival. We get yeah. everything. Today. Our dressing. <laughs> We've been doing this for weeks, preparing. I want the compound. Give me the compound. <laughs> where are the drugs? Oh, yeah, where are the girls? Where's catering? Yeah. Uh, there's Can I a, uh, now? 
Where's my <laughs> dressing room? I'm pretty sure about, 70, I'm pretty sure about 75 of, the, of those bands is going to be on that bit. Sick. That one, just, that one just home with me. I don't know why. But it did. <laughs> yeah, definitely when we're done here, hop over there and go see. Yeah, there's there's going to be about 100, uh, I think 110 or more that actually tour regularly are yeah. is what they selected from. Yeah, I'm excited. The, uh, I didn't see the Lid Biscuit announcement. That's pretty good. Lid Biscuit's playing. Uh, yeah, we got Testaments on. Didn't? Yeah, did I see that? On it. Tech Nine's on it. Did I see Red that Rock. Steve-O is on it? Yeah, He's Steve-O is going to be one of the hosts. That's Dude, crazy. I play, we played, a, we played a, the Gathering of the Juggalos with Tech Nine. <laughs> and oh, wow. uh, the rapper that went on before him, I can totally blank on his name right now. He went over his set time by two hours. <laughs> Oh <laughs> my god! <laughs> we're like, we're are like, you kidding what me? What the fuck is happening right now? Yeah, no. How, it was, how do you even allow that? Like, how, I, like, dude? I don't know. Somebody's got to pull the plug. We're eventually, all like, we're all kind of in shock. We're like, what the fuck is actually happening right now? Preferred to go for two yeah, hours is like everyone's just watching. Everyone's just standing there. You went for the like Guinness. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Two, two hours. hours. Yeah, yeah. What? Technology went on like late at night, you know? <laughs> like, real where in the hell? I was going to say, you. where was the stage manager on that one? Uh, the gathering? I don't want to say <laughs> yes. smoking meth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to speculate. It ain't, that, here. it ain't that late, brother. <laughs> oh, man. This is an all night event. I'm kidding. He's, I, I'm kidding. They're all great people. I would say yeah. I would say the shows usually. I see the announcement. Um, I would say uh, we'll start with Chase uh, as we close out here. Um, don't want to take up too much of you guys this time. What does Butcher Babies have coming up that you can announce? Sure. Uh, we so we got we just dropped four four new singles over the last couple months. So check those out. And uh, we just got booked on Aftershock. Uh, which is going to be awesome. We're playing with Metallica on uh, uh, fuck yes. make sure I don't fuck the days up. Do we? Are we on the same date as one of these? I think we might be. I think we are, dude. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're playing on Friday, the 8th, October 8th. Um, yeah, Metallica has two days. They're playing that Friday and that Sunday, aren't they? Yeah. I th- um, Matt, I think we're playing Louder Than Life on the same day. Yeah, yeah, I think like I saw in, something like that. Global. Yeah, that's gonna be fucking rad. We're playing with yeah, bro. We're playing with Snoop Dogg and Nine Inch Nails. That's sick. <laughs> no. Yo. Yo. Are you guys playing? Are you Yo, guys playing what? in the festival of Mudvayne on the same day? We uh, is it the same day? No, no I'm, I'm asking. Do you guys day. know if any of them? If any of you guys are playing like with Mudvayne on one of the festival days? No, nah, that would be so sick. I don't think we are though. I have to look at all of them. Yeah, I'm totally. I'm looking at them right now. Yeah, I, well, I was gonna say, uh, first chance I'll probably run into you, I'll probably be there. So, if you want help, Chase, let me know. But you, you have uh, Metal in the Mountains in August. We are headlining Metal in the Mountains, I was just getting there, yeah. So, that's gonna be really cool. Um, that's Pipe Stem, West Virginia. Yep, yeah, event cool. center, it's gonna be cool. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of cool stuff. Look forward to it. Looks like you know things are easing up. The, the sh- these shows haven't been canceled, so <laughs> that's a win. It's cost, right? I, say, yeah. I don't think it's been announced yet. But do you guys are you guys actually touring at that time? Probably. I, I can't say here or there because we don't know for sure yet. Absolutely. Yeah, I know there's yeah. a lot of traffic going on. Uh, so I know there's a lot of bands that are like being speculated as far as touring because there's just so much traffic you know with everything opening up it's just like every band's coming out at the same time we're gonna have to go i'm itching to get back on the road bro yeah hell yeah hell yeah Um, Yeah. sweet so butcher babies make sure check go look up on facebook social media facebook instagram youtube we got some we got some cool music videos that we just put out so check those out hell yeah Awesome. And then, John, you kind of already elaborated a little bit. You know, Bad Wolves is kind of doing some stuff right now, but still also in the search for... We're in a transitional... uh, Basically, we're not really doing anything until all our legal matters are finished. Um, Absolutely. And uh, that's yet to be determined when that exactly will be. Not saying we're not being productive and making plans, but, you know, it's kind of where that's where it lies right now. Awesome. And how about you, Matty? Oh, we have a couple festivals booked already. I know we're 
we're doing two in June. Uh, I forget exactly what they are called, but uh, it's with Hailstorm, I believe, is headlining. I thought Chevelle was supposed to be headlining on one of them. Uh, June 26th oh, yeah, and 27th, one. Oshkosh, in Wisconsin, and somewhere else, I think, in Illinois. Um, we're going to be in the studio. We actually depart from the studio to go do those for the two days. Uh, we're going to be in the studio from June to August. And then we have a few other festivals. Um, Louder Than Life's one, I think, maybe Aftershock. I can't remember all of them. We just announced Shiprock as well for January. Uh, Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's yeah, talks about cool. tours. There's talks about tours and stuff like that. But, you know, like Chase said, it's kind of it's all up in the air. A little a bit. So it feels up in the air, even though they're yeah. announcing. Like, I'm still waiting, man. I'm like, yo, like I don't know. Don't know. I would imagine doing. that if we're doing that many festivals by that time around the October yeah. and 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 everything, like we're gonna have a tour. Um, but it's just nothing's confirmed, nothing solidified yet. Um, but definitely putting the feels out there. So for us, it's just uh, the big thing for us is getting into this next record, mm-hmm. getting a little bit heavier, going back to uh, some of that day one sort of sound with the, the advanced writing styles going back to your roots as they say (laughs) gonna gonna have a lot more screaming definitely gonna be more screaming oh yeah that's dope hell yeah i'm down yeah Yeah. what kind kind of burrito i don't know but i gotta it's it's from cilantro remember cilantro by third encore no cilantro does not fuck around you guys know that's nice cilantro is nice that is the that is the jam that's yeah, a spot right there. Uh, Pablitos, I think. It's up the road from there a little bit, too. There's um, like, it's, it's a really good spot. There's a good six to ten banging fucking Mexican shacks all in that area. Yeah, yeah hell yeah. The uh, cilantro <laughs> one the, at the Chevron gas station. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. Like, yeah it's, it's like they'll have like little pop up tent things, and then you just like. You're like, uh, should I do this? And then you do it, and you're like, yo, I'm yeah, doing that yeah, every single day. Yeah, because it's like some some fucking grandma that <laughs> you know may or may not be illegal that's just trying to feed just her family with love. Slaying. It's so good. Slaying it. <laughs> I love this. I love it. I love it. That was good. Sorry, boys. <laughs> you burrito? Well, I know. I mean, I just let him in, and then they got to come up the elevator and all that shit. But I oh, gotta, right, right, right. Yeah, I was like, I just, I cilantro at yeah, the gas station one, man. Man, it's, it keeps growing too. It's just on fire, man. It's like sometimes it takes like forty minutes to get something there now. Yeah, there. Yeah, they 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 do it right over there for sure. Yeah. When I'm not when I'm in LA and I'm not hitting the burritos heavy, Dave's hot chicken is my move. Dude, Dave's hot chicken. Fuck around. Yeah, Dave's hot chicken. Dave's, Dave's, hot, Dave's hot chicken. Dave's hot chicken. <laughs> fucking uh, what's the chicken and waffles place? Roscoe's. Roscoe's. Oh yeah. I went, in there, yeah. I went in there one time with, with a with a black girl on a date, and I was the only white dude there. <laughs> did you go to the one in Anaheim, or did you go to the one in Anaheim? <laughs> it was fucking dope. no. It was dope. It was not. It was the one on Pico. Like oh, way down south. Yeah. 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 <laughs> These dudes were like, these dudes were like, yo, what the fuck is this guy doing in here? <laughs> no, we went, uh, when I went there, we went to the one in Anaheim, we were at Nam, and like me and my band, we were the only white dudes in there, and it was pretty hilarious, because everybody, I'm not saying everybody oh, in my band, oh. you know. <laughs> what is that? Oh, man. That's that my burrito, that was, man. I thought that was a gold oh. rapper, like you got that shit from Willy Wonka himself. <laughs> That's my new <laughs> shit. <laughs> Damn, man, I want some Roscoe's now, man. Shit, I need some Roscoe's. Yeah, now I'm- now I'm ready for the Cali burrito, dude. Oh, and I'm man. all the way on, Look at this thing. on the East Coast. Just get a bite. Get in there. Ooh, ooh, I'll yeah. say tease all the guests. Tease we'll all put, the guests. We're putting this on Instagram right here. This part here's going on Instagram. For the yeah. yeah. This is how no John Burke is the best. <laughs> Some food in his mouth. <laughs> Let's get a rating. Let's get a rating. Uh, <laughs> on that note, John over here making us all hungry and shit. I'm going to release these guys all for dinner and stuff. Thank you for tuning in to episode eight of Who Gave the Drug on Mike. Thank you, gentlemen, for taking time out of your day and being with us. We'll definitely oh, have man, you back. You know, shows are coming back. Concerts, festivals, they're all lined up. So these guys are about to get busy. Make sure you add all their socials. We got From Ashes to New, Bad Wolves, Johnny C., is actually John's drum tech, also a session artist. He is our new host, also. Welcome, Johnny, to the family. 
and yeah. Chase and Butcher Babies, make sure you go hit them up. Yeah. Chase the drums on everything. Chase the drums on literally everything. There you Chase go. So go Thanks give them some love. Them. Check out their videos. Check out, you know, new singles, new videos. You know, give them the love. Obviously, we haven't been doing this for a year and a half to two years. So it's coming back. It's coming to you live. And we're going to bring it to you. Thanks, guys. Thank you, gentlemen. Right Hell yeah. Good Good boys. Boys. Up, y'all. Yeah. Have a great week. Yes, sir. Bye. Bye. Peace. Peace However you, you end this, but peace. Yeah, right? I don't even see the button.